your first title when you were 15 years old? Yeah. Did you expect that? Um, no, I didn't. I actually, so we had, I had to go through a qualifying round and I lost and they have this thing called lucky loser. So if somebody pulls out, you get in. Whoa. And that's happened and then I won my first round and next you know is the finals and then it just happened so oh fast. God. Yeah. That's <laughs> kind of crazy. So you had a second chance, basically? Yeah, they call it lucky loser and like that was the first time in my life that ever happened to me because I'm not really so lucky that's except sick. that time. Oh my God. So that was, that was pretty cool. Love that. Yeah. That's great. I wasn't expecting it. So music and acting are such different crafts. So how do you find the ability to invest in both? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> the balance is hard, as my manager will know behind the camera there. You know, um, time is really the hardest thing to balance. Yeah. But I think with any sort of art form, it's like if you can be as honest and authentic as possible, it'll translate always. So yeah. it's basically the same thing, just different, um, different circumstances. You know, it's like when I'm acting, I'm trying to be as honest and as authentic as I can be and that hopefully translates and then same thing with the music and so it's it really is the same although it, it's a little bit different but yeah I mean it, it's a tough thing to balance but um, I'm fortunate that like for example my show has a musical I'm yeah. able to do both I yeah. get to act and sing so mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate this far in balancing both. Wow, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> I hear you're a big fan of card and board games what are some of your favorites? Um, I would say the ultimate favorite is Uno. Um, oh, oh my god, you know spicy Uno? <laughs> oh yeah, the, oh, <laughs> unfortunately god. in our house it caused so many arguments. Yes. I can't imagine how, tell me how many times I've left the table or, oh my god. or yeah, something totally. like that over a Uno game. And I also I also like this game called Crowns. It's like a new thing. I don't know if anybody's heard of it, but it's like kind of like luck and skill at the same time. Ooh, exciting, yeah, which pretty. seems to be your, your recipe. Yeah, <laughs> luck and skill, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been working out for me so far. Totally, that's great. <laughs> So, would you rather win a Tony, Emmy, or a Grammy? Oh, jeez. It depends on what for. I would rather win a Grammy as an artist. Yeah. I would rather win an Emmy as a writer. Mm -hmm. And I would rather win a Tony as, I don't know. That, I don't know where matter. I'm going. Win yeah, all Tony, three, so Tony to me, honestly, is less <laughs> less important. No offense <laughs> to anybody who wants a Tony, but I think Grammy's the answer. Grammy's that was the way answer. Too long. Well, you get all three. <laughs> yes, right on. We'll see. You got, here we go. What artists are on your top five Spotify year and playlist? I believe my number one was Jaden Smith. Nice. Um, and then I think SZA, Gibeon, and the last one was J. Cole. Boom. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, I guess I have the same question for you. So oh, your, God. your top five Spotify. I don't even <laughs> know. Honestly, I have no idea. It's I okay. Think... You can just make it. Yeah, I know. Honestly. <laughs> I didn't know mine either. I just checked quickly before this. Totally. I should have checked. But uh, my best guess is it's... Uh, Casey Musgraves, Holly Humberstone, who is just the coolest. I don't know if you've heard. She's very new. She's awesome. Gracie Abrams, yes. dopest. There's way more that I'm totally blanking on, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for this question. So <laughs> moving, on. moving on. Outside of tennis, what are some things that you want to accomplish? I definitely want to get into like fashion. I really, mm -hmm. really enjoyed it and try to get into more street style wear. And then beyond that, um, just leaving an impact on the world. I, I don't want to be known as just a tennis player. I want to be known as someone who inspired someone to wake up or do something. Um, just feeling proud of themselves. So yeah, love that. So <laughs> um, what kind of legacy do you want to leave with your work? Oh jeez, pull that Uno reverse. <laughs> yeah, Uno reverse card. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think one leading by example is huge for me. You know. Um, putting my money where my mouth is, whether that's literally money or yeah. like, my, you know, my time. My, my hope is to hold on to the fact that I'm not jaded. You know, I think a lot of people, they try and change the world and it maybe it doesn't go how they want it to or how they yeah. assume it should and they get discouraged and they think it's hopeless. And I yeah. think holding on to that hope and holding yeah. on to like really knowing that you can make a difference and as long as you like continue to persevere and work on yourself, you'll actually be helping a lot more people because of that. So, yeah. you know, what that looks like, I'm not sure yet, but yeah. something in that world. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like one small thing can make a big difference. 100%. So. What was the moment in your career when you felt, okay, I belong? I don't know. I still feel like I don't feel like it a lot. Um, Did all that. Because <laughs> I'm typically the youngest one there all the time. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always the youngest and trying to figure out, I guess, everything going on in a room full of, like, basically grown women I'm like you're a 17 year old me like mm. doing homework in between matches and trying to figure out like how to finish high school and everything um, so I would say at times I don't feel like I belong but I will say that the moment I feel like well this is what I dreamed of and it's happening is um, I was 15 and I played Venus Williams at Wimbledon and actually did well and won the match and um, for me I remember 
um, when that happened, I just like immediately cried. At the end of the match, and I never cry, and that was the first time I cried after a win. I just remember like playing back in my head, like, oh, this is everything that little little girl Coco was dreaming of. So I feel like it was more so not me crying in that moment. I think it was like eight year old little me. Coco. Yeah, little right on. Coco crying. Love that. I <laughs> yeah. love that. That's so good. I think also like with the whole okay, I belong here thing. Uh, there was a period when I was filming season one of my show, and and I felt super incapable of performing a certain scene and I was having so many stress like panic attacks about it and eventually I, I actually did overcome that and I did do the scene yeah. and at that moment I felt great I felt super accomplished but at the same time I was like okay now how can we go beyond this yeah. I think there's not necessarily a moment where you're like I've arrived yeah. but you, you sort of check off milestones mm -hmm. and you're like okay now let's shoot higher and shoot higher and so I think the moment of okay I belong is probably actually dangerous because yeah. then you're letting your guard down and yeah. you're like oh I'm good to go versus like continuing yeah. to aim higher yeah. forever yeah, like my thing is like I always say dream big and like for me it's like you, you have accomplished one goal but I'm always like looking next and like, I think it's good we remember to obviously celebrate your little celebrations of course. but you don't want to ever be comfortable I guess if that makes sense. Yeah. So you always want to be better. Totally. I don't know how to word that. But, no, no, yeah. <laughs> but like I always try to like from, like whenever I accomplish something I'm like okay what's next because like, I feel like once you say like I belong or I'm happy then it's kind of like you kind of you know done and retire I guess. I don't know. Totally. <laughs> Well, I think that's part of the cool thing about life is that, you know, you just, yeah. it keeps expanding and keeps going on and yeah. on. Like, you know, I don't want to get to a point where I'm like, no. I'm done, you know? No, until I'm, I'm working, in the grave. That's yeah, when I'm done. Say. That's when I'm done. Yeah, I'm working until they say yeah, clear. until I'm done. Yeah, right on. Bonus question for both of you. Ooh, okay. Finish this statement. If all else fails, at least I have blank. At least I have my brothers. They're my wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> my answer is, if all else fails, at least I have my breath. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because I was um, in the hospital in January for, won't go into too much, but it was not good. I was very much in a low place, lowest place mentally, spiritually, and physically my entire life. There's a point overnight where my parents couldn't stay, and I was alone, and none of my friends were picking up the phone, and I was just like so, so alone in that moment. And the only thing that got me through that moment was being able to focus my breath. And it gave me that 30% more peace. And so now I know, like, you know, you take away my health, you take away everything, you take away all of that stuff, and at least I can come back to my breath and find peace through that. And to me, that's, that's my answer. That's I'm Joshua Bassett. And I'm Coco Gall. Thank you so much, American Eagle, for having us. Thank you. Bye.